Today, we're talking about pocket operator pattern organization for drums. Freebeat. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day, so if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Today's patron shout-out goes to Lorenzo Tano. Thank you so very much for the support. Let's get started. So if you don't know, I am currently working on a pocket operator album, which means I am using these little guys more so than I ever have. And over the course of working on this album, I've discovered a few uh, new ways of not really working, but kind of organizing things that have really clicked with me. And today I want to show you a way that I've been organizing my drums for songs that has really enhanced uh, my workflow and it makes me feel like I get quite a bit out of the 16 available patterns. So it started when I realized uh, most of my songs only had like two to four main drum patterns throughout the course of the track. You know, like a verse pattern, a chorus pattern, a bridge pattern, maybe an intro or outro or a solo section pattern, uh, just the basics like that. So I was really only using two to four patterns and I was starting to think, well, how do I use the other 16, right? Of course, drum fills. But I didn't really just want to randomly fill these up with 12 different drum fills. I wanted a way to organize it that made sense and worked with the overall composition. So I came up with this uh, kind of row system that I really like. So the first row here, these first four, are my straight up patterns for my song. So like I said, I typically only use two to four patterns, like actual solid drum beats, if you will. This one that I'm working on right now only has three. The first three are lit up. Uh, so let's have a listen to those. Now remember, we don't chain these together really in the song. These are just the different patterns. So this one will be our verse. Super basic. The second one is our chorus. And the third one right now is just kind of not quite a bridge, but not really a verse section either. I don't know what to call it yet. I don't know what it's going to turn into, but it sounds like this. So the first row, the first three patterns here are just the main patterns for the song, the different sections. Then what I do is I use each of the following rows to correspond to four drum patterns to go along with these original patterns. So pattern one here, this one, I've got four different fills for this first pattern in this second row here. These are the fills for pattern one. Then what I would do is switch to pattern two, listen to that, and come up with four different fills for that pattern in this row right here. And then I'd do the same for number three. So I'd have three different patterns, each with four unique fills for that pattern. And in this case, I'd actually wind up with uh, pattern four itself here completely blank, completely free uh, for maybe uh, one standalone pattern in the song that doesn't quite fit into a category uh, or just left blank to help you know, with a smooth cutoff when you're sequencing or when you're chaining your patterns. Uh, but more than likely, that'll be either an intro or an outro pattern. But let me show you how I wind up chaining these because that's the cool thing too. It really stretches the amount of patterns we have. So we're going to go to pattern one as our example, because as you can see, I've got four fills for pattern one if we uh, use my little organization system here. So in the context of this song, we are going to chain pattern one three times and then chain our first pattern for pattern one. So we're gonna get four bars, three times through the normal pattern, then on the last time through the first fill. Then we're gonna do that again, chain pattern one three more times, and then go to the next fill in the pattern one fill row. Again, this second row here. Then we're gonna do that again, three times on pattern one, then we're gonna jump down to number seven, then finally three times on number one again, and pat or pattern number eight. So it's gonna look like this. Hold pattern, chain pattern one three times, then Number five, that's our first fill in the fill row uh, using my system here for pattern one. Then back to pattern one, chain it three times. The next pad, uh, number six. Then we're gonna chain one three times again. Pattern number seven, three times on number one, pattern number eight. Now we have 16 measures of drums with four unique fills and we're only using five patterns. Let's have a listen.
There we go. That entire chunk of music, again, just used five patterns. As you can tell, it's a very effective way of doing things on the pocket operator, because even though we only have those 16 patterns, it really opens your eyes as to how you can view them. So let's go ahead and take uh, pattern two here. Let's make some uh, fills for that. So I'm gonna go down to pattern nine, because that's gonna be the second row of fills. Remember the first row is our original patterns, and then these are the fills for pattern one, these will be the fills for pattern two. These are the fills for pattern three. Okay, so pattern nine here. Let's uh, let's go like a uh, heavy kick drum. Yeah. And I'm just putting some snare drums down here. Yeah. And then we'll do quarters on the hi-hat. That'll break things up. Cool, let's uh, make sure those work. So chain pattern two into pattern nine. Oh yeah, awesome. Let's make another fill. Um, let's do something with the hi-hat. And then we'll double trigger these and then an open hi-hat right here. And we'll do hi-hat, we'll go psa, psa, psa. Yeah, okay, bear with me. This might not be the best pattern, but let's test it. Chain pattern two into pattern 10. That's fun, yeah. Let's come up with another, let's go. Just quarter notes on the bass drum, big open hi-hat. I know these fills are kind of out there, but I'm just uh, literally making them up on the spot here. Let's chain pattern two into pattern 11 and see how that sounds. Cool, good enough for now. Uh, pattern 12, the last fill, our fourth fill of the second pattern's fill slots here. Uh, let's do something snare drum heavy. Let's go da, 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 and then we're gonna do a double trigger on this step, so I'm gonna put a snare in there, hold it down, put BPM. Yep, we'll do again, da, 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 same thing. And you'll have to bear with me here. I'm just, like I said, making these fills up on the spot. So yeah, the fills aren't what I want you to take away from this. It's how everything is organized that I want you to uh, take away from this video. Yeah, there we go. Dun, 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 on the kick. That's a pretty cool feeling, actually. Okay, so now we have our second pattern and we have four different fills for that pattern. It's time to chain. So just like we did with pattern one, we're gonna take pattern two, chain it three times, and then our first fill, chain pattern two three times, second fill, back to pattern two, chain it three times, third fill, back to pattern two, chain it three times, and fourth fill. Here we go, let's have a listen. Here's our second pattern plus four unique fills with it. Nice. Again, that whole section of music used just five patterns. So in total, we have now only used 10 patterns, 11 if we include uh, pattern three, which we have not worked with yet, but we've got 32 measures of music off of just essentially 10 patterns. Now we still have our third pattern here, which then if I wanted fills for that, I have the entire fourth row for four more unique fills for pattern three. And again, in this case, that also leaves us with pattern four blank for an intro or an outro pattern or to be left blank for easier use of cutting off the pattern when we're done recording it.
If you can't tell, I really, really like this organizational system. It completely clicks with how my brain works on music. If it doesn't click with yours, that's okay too. Let me know in a comment down below if you've got a method that you enjoy. And of course, if this method does work for you, also let me know. I'd really like to hear what you do with it. I do hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. New content every single day. I sure appreciate you all watching it. It means the world to me. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye.